Good afternoon. Thank you to uh, the Governor uh, Kong Khan and for AIS for the opportunity to be here today. And it's an honor to travel 24 hours across the world to be here and to have an opportunity to talk about urbanization and what's happening in the world in terms of changes, advancements in technology, and how we're changing what's possible in the world with these new advancements in technology. One of the things that's quite exciting is that we are at a period of tremendous change in the world, uh, brought on by urbanization, by advancements in new uh, technologies, and the ability to uh, look at things that are possible for how we live our lives. So one of the things I wanted to talk about is, what is a city? And what is urbanization? And cities, by their very nature, are places where people come and they congregate and they learn from one another. They have the ability to benefit from services, whether that's transportation, education, healthcare, a whole array of activities. And as we've seen over the period of time in the course of history, cities continue to grow and people continue to migrate to cities and cities become the lifeblood of our communities. Uh, And as we look at urbanization, it is obviously the continued migration of people into city environments. And they're doing that for a number of reasons, but one of the key things is that people come to cities because they want to work together to solve real problems and to to make life better for themselves and their children and next generations. And so as we look at where we are today as a society, uh, it's important to take a step back and look at previous civilizations, places in the world that have had profound change that's impacted the benefit of their people and for generations to follow. So a couple interesting places in the world, if you've ever heard of Palenque, it's a a civilization that was adopted by the Mayans, uh, just south of Mexico City. This is a, a development area that in its time was ahead of its time. It's an advancement in architecture. Uh, It's the ability to, one of the first cities, to adopt how you bring running water to your populations. There was eight rivers that flow in and around the city. And what they were able to do was figure out how to channel the water into the city to give people the first options of running water. Actually, the very first versions of a sanitation system. Uh, and 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 then in the architectural build of the city, they use limestone for the first time to build structures that would be able to endure different types of climates, also earthquake-proof. You think about this, you know, 5,000 years ago, building a structure that was earthquake-proof is pretty profound. Uh, in addition, in China, uh, we look at some of the advancements of everything from the very first version or build-out of the Great Wall. You know, if you look back at what the Great Wall was built for, It was designed to protect the population from raiding Mongol tribes that were moving in. It was designed to create a method of transportation to help people could move up and back and forth and provide commerce on the Silk Road. Uh, It also became a way to protect crops and growth within the community. Uh, And over time, many small parts of the wall become the Great Wall. And as you look at what's happened over time, there are civilizations that have all had profound impacts on what they've done to contribute to society. So everything from the Incas, who have figured out one of the most advanced transportation systems in South America. Uh, You've got other parties that developed the very first forms of how you could basically move electricity through different parts of a city. And why is this important? Well, because if people continue to come together to solve real problems, this is the way, how we evolve, how we get better with our lives in our society. And the urbanization element is not going away. As a matter of fact, as we skip forward to the present day, today there are 7 billion people living on the planet. That number is estimated to grow to upwards of 9 billion people in the next many years. And of that population, 68% of those people are going to live in cities. That's an enormous amount of people. And that trend is not going away. It's only going to continue. 
So for those of you who are mayors, governors, or other public officials who provide critical services, this is something to pay attention to.